All right, in this video lesson, we're going to learn to calculate genetic frequencies, the so-called P's and Q's of population genetics. So to learn how to do that, we're going to start by looking at a very straightforward situation. We're going to look at a dominant trait in humans, which is the presence of dimples, and a recessive trait, no dimples. And we're just going to make up some numbers here. Let's say we've got a population of 200 individuals, and in the population of 200 individuals, 72 out of 200 have dimples. That would mean the rest of them, 128 out of 200, have no dimples, because this is a straightforward autosomal dominant recessive situation with these dimples. We don't have to worry about uh, any other phenotypes. There are only two phenotypes, dimples or no dimples, so the entire population has to be one or the other. Now, the geneticist might ask here as well, Okay, that's interesting. You get 72 people with dimples, but we know the people with dimples, well, they could be big D, big D as their genotype, or they could be big D, little d as their genotype. And of those 72 people, we can't really tell how many of each we have. We could tell how many are little d, little d, though, because the little d, little d ones, well, we can just observe them. There's 128 of those. So a geneticist might ask, well, what percentage of the population is big D, big D, or big D, little d, or little d, little d? And that's what genetic frequencies are all about. These are what we call our genotype frequencies, the percentage of individuals of each of those different genotypes. So in order to find out the genotypic frequencies, we need to know what are called the frequencies of alleles. Now, the frequencies of alleles, frequencies of alleles would be how many of the alleles, how many of the letters, the D's, the big D's or the little D's, how many, of, what percentage of them, or what proportion of them are big D's and what proportion of them are little D's? Now, in a population of 200 individuals, we know there's going to be 400 D's because every individual has two, either two big ones, big and a little, or two little. But every individual's got two, so we've got a total of 400 D's. So what we say is that big D, we're going to assign that a letter. We're going to call big D P. And I'll explain why we're going to call it P in just a moment. But P is going to be equal to the frequency, or think of it as the percentage, of all the letters out there, percentage of alleles, um, percentage of the dominant, I should say dominant alleles. How many of them are big Ds? So the frequency of dominant alleles, the difference between frequency and percentage is frequency would be a decimal, percentage would be a whole number. So if it was like 0.5, that would be 50%. So P is our frequency, frequency of dominant alleles. Uh, little d, well, we're going to say that's equal to Q. Q is equal to our frequency of recessive. In other words, what percentage of the Ds out there are little Ds? Now, the reason we use P and Q is we, we borrow this from math where, uh, and logic where P stands for a proposition, which is a statement, and Q would be an alternate statement. So P and Q, you ever heard the expression, bind your P's and Q's? It, it may come from there. There's other reasons we, we use that. Uh, but P is a statement or a proposition, the frequency of the dominant alleles, so Q would be an alternate statement. That would be the frequency of recessive alleles. So we're going to use P's and Q's instead of big D's and little D's here. Now, by, just by looking at the individuals, we can identify all those individuals who are little d, little d. And little d, little d is equivalent of having Q times Q. And Q times Q is Q squared. And we can find out which individuals are Q squared. Those individuals are the ones that have no dimples. They're the ones that have uh, the recessive, homozygous recessive genotype. So we say that Q squared is equal to the frequency, frequency of the homozygous recessive Now, that stands to reason if little d, little d is q times q or q squared, then big D, big D is equal to p times p, which is equal to p squared. 
Now, P squared is going to be the frequency of the dominant, homozygous dominant uh, genotype. So, frequency of the homozygous, that means both letters the same. Homozygous, let's do that right. Homozygous dominant genotype. Now that leaves us with one other possibility, because there could be heterozygous individuals, right? There could be individuals that are big D, little d. So big D, little d, standard reason would be P times Q. However, it turns out it's actually going to end up being 2 times P times Q. And I'll explain why in just a moment, but this would be the frequency of the heterozygous genotype. So why 2PQ instead of just PQ? Well, let's just make some room here. What we've got up here. So why 2PQ? Well, let's say that we have a cross between heterozygous individuals, big D, little d. Heterozygous would have difference. If we were to make a Punnett square of that cross and work out the probabilities of the offspring here, we could get 1 quarter big D, little d. 2 out of 4 or 1 half big D little d. Sorry, I believe I misspoke there. Big D, big D, 1 quarter to half. Half big D little d and 1 quarter little d. Well, these guys right here are the so-called P squares. That would be the frequency of the homozygous dominant genotype. These ones right here would be the Q squared. That would be the frequency of the homozygous recessive genotype. But there are two different ways to be big D, little d. Technically, there's big D, little d, and little d, big d. There's two different ways to have that, which is why it's 2 times P times Q. Because there's 1, 2 out of 4 possibilities there. So there's where we get 2 P, Q from. Now, as I was saying earlier, there's one of these values that we can calculate quite directly. We can, we can just count up the individuals and calculate it quite easily. And that is Q squared. We can calculate Q squared, this one right here, because those are the individuals that are little d, little d. And we said earlier, I'm not going to scroll back there, but we said earlier that there were 128 out of 200 of those individuals that were Q squared. Well, if we want to find out the value of Q, if we want to find out this value right here, which we're going to need if we're going to do any other calculations, we can just find that simply by taking the square root of Q squared. And what we do to one side of the equation, we do to the other. So the square root of Q squared is just Q. And the square root of 128 over 200, you can punch that out in your calculator, that's equal to the square root of 0.64, comes out to 0 0.8. Okay, 128 divided by 200, square root that, 0 0.8. So we know what the value of Q is. Well, Q is the frequency of recessive alleles. P is the frequency of dominant alleles. And since all the alleles in the population are either recessive or dominant, that means whatever alleles aren't Q, they have to be P. Another way of saying this is that 0.8% of the Ds out there, or 0.8 frequency, or 80% of the Ds out there are little Ds. Well, and that means 20% are big Ds. So we could say that P plus Q is equal to 1. In other words, whatever value we have of P plus 0.8, or 80%, is going to be equal to 1. So that means P is going to be equal to 0.2. So we now have the frequency of the dominant allele. Frequency of the dominant allele right here. So having both of those, that allows us now to calculate how many or what frequency of the population is big D, big D. We can calculate that simply by taking P squared. So P squared is equal to 0.2 squared. So P squared is equal to 0.04. So that tells us that the percentage of the population that is big D, big D, right here, that percentage is 4%. We don't know which one of the individuals with dimples is big D, big D, but we know that 4% of those individuals are big D, big D. Now, the last thing we have to calculate in this scenario is we want to know what 2PQ is. 2PQ would be the heterozygous individuals. So 2PQ would be equal to 2 
times our value of p, which is 0 0.2, times our value of q, which is 0 0.8. All right? Careful not to take your p squared to q squared values. We want q and we want p. We don't want p squared to q squared. So 2 times 0.2 times 0.8 is 2pq is going to come out to 0 0.32. So that means 32% of our population is heterozygous. Big D, little d, or 0.32 of our population. Now, here's where we get an interesting situation, is that if we add all of these up, if we add up this one, plus this one, plus this one, that should be everybody. That should be all 200 people in the population. So if we add up Q squared, and Q squared, um, we had right here was 0 0.64. If we add up q squared plus p squared, which we have right here, plus 2pq, which we have right here, it should add up to 1. It should add up to the whole population. So we can say that p squared plus 2pq plus q squared is equal to 1. And does that work out? Well, 0 0.64, sorry. Let's get that right. P squared is 0 0.04 plus 0 0.32 plus 0 0.64 is equal to 1. Well, that is equal to 1, which means we know we've got all of our calculations correct and we've got all our values correct. Now, an interesting question here might be, well, so what? Who cares? Um, well, evolutionists, evolutionary biologists would care, and a couple of guys named Hardy and Weinberg would care. And that will be another video where we get into, well, what's the point of doing these calculations? What's the point of knowing these values? And it all relates to the concept of evolution. But in the meantime, let's just do a quick example of an exam question that involves doing a similar type of calculation. So here we've got a question about lactose intolerance. It's an autosomal recessive disorder. Autosomal recessive, well, condition, I guess characterize the inability to digest lactose. People who are either homozygous for the dominant allele or heterozygous are able to digest lactose. So that means P squared can digest it and 2PQ can digest it. The frequency of the lactose of lactose intolerance differs among populations. For example, 14% of Europeans are have lactose intolerance. That's going to be important. 14%. So what the question is asking us here is what is the frequency for lactose intolerance, frequency of the allele for lactose intolerance in the Northern European population? Now remember, the two alleles are P, which would be equal to the dominant allele, we'll call it big L, which is equal to uh, tolerance for lactose. Okay, and it's the recessive condition that's intolerance, so that's Q would be equal to little L, which is uh, I guess I was going to put not tolerant, but they're saying intolerant. So good enough. All right, so what we're trying to calculate here then is the allele for intolerance. We're trying to calculate the value of Q. And that's actually a relatively easy question because Q squared is equal to those individuals' the frequency of little l, little l. And that is 14% of the population. In other words, that is equal to 0 0.14. I'm sorry. That is equal to 14. I don't know why it does that. 14 out of 100, or 0 0.14. So if Q squared is 0 0.14, well then Q is just equal to the square root of q squared, which would be equal to the square root of 0 0.14. And I'll need a calculator for that one. Can't do that in my head. So 0 0.14, take the square root. We get 0 0.3742 to four digits. We'd express our answer in this case, um, well, likely to two digits, since we have two digits in our question here. So we'd express our answer as 0 0.3742. If they asked for a percent, we'd express it as 37% of the alleles are little q. 
Now, perhaps a better question here, because this is a pretty easy one, a better question might be uh, what percentage of the population is heterozygous? Well, for that, we need 2 times P times Q. So if we were asked for that, we would go 2 times P times Q. Well, remember, P plus Q, let's check that again. I don't know why it does this. Okay. P plus Q is equal to 1. Therefore, P is equal to 1 minus Q, which means P is equal to 1 minus 0 0.3742, which gives us for P 0 0.6258. I'm going to four digits here. There's more digits in my calculator, and I should keep all those digits in my calculator. But if I write out at least four of them, well, I'm, I'm going to get uh, an answer that's, that's going to be close enough to two significant digits. So 2 times P times Q is going to be then 2 times our value of P, which is 0 0.6258. Just going to have to make some room here. Times our value I'll get that fixed. Okay, 0 0.6258 times our value of Q, which was 0 0.3742, and we can work out 2PQ just by multiplying 2 times 0.6258 times 0.3742, and we get 0 0.4683. 0 0.4683 or 47% of the population would be heterozygous. Now, this particular question, they're not asking for that. They're just asking for this, but they could very well ask for 2PQ. That's a much more common type of question to get. Okay. 